guys, I want to show you some of the books, some of the books that I've accumulated. I know most people throw away their textbooks. I just couldn't stand to throw away my textbooks. Very seldom do I go to them. I hardly, I hardly ever pick up these books and look inside them, but I do sometimes, and I'm glad I still have them. Most of the times when I'm going to know something, I go on the internet and I look it up because it's a lot easier and quicker for me just to Google, Google something. And you can go online and you can look at pages and pictures of plant structures. I can go into a book and I can look at the structures of, of what, you know, uh, what a plant does and I can look at the pictures of the cells. I can look at it online too. It's a lot easier and it's a lot faster. Our technical age has changed things a whole lot, but I'm not sorry I've kept these books. I want to show you some of them. So here's some of my gardening books, here's some of my botany books, some of the other collections of books that I have. Hey, y'all, I'm back. All right, then I'm going to take just a really, really quick plant physiology lesson. Okay, one of the things I learned in plant physiology is why, why pruning works, why pinching out the tip of the plant works. Okay, growing plants have a structure that's called a meristem, the bud at the very, very, very tip of the plant. The term for it, the botanical term for it, is apical meristem. And that produces a hormone called auxin. When we talk about plants producing hormones, that's the, produ the auxin is the hormone that's produced by the apical meristem. Okay. It also inhibits side branching. So what this is called is called apical dominance. So the tip of the plant, the very tip of the plant is the apex. The tip of the mountain is the apex of the mountain. So we've got the tip, that's the apex. Okay, um, have you ever heard of tissue culture? Have you, well, you may have heard of plants that were grown in tissue culture. You see a lot of these, I think more in the horticulture industry uh, as maybe garden plants rather than uh, vegetable plants. Maybe some trees. What this does, it makes clones of the plant. It's like making, taking cuttings off the plants and sticking in a hormone and uh, taking cuttings off of your fig plant and propagating your plant through cuttings. Uh, what that does is they vary in a sterile condition but you don't want any bacteria, any bacteria or any viruses in there because that can ruin the whole thing. So under sterile conditions, in a microscope, biologists go in and they surgically remove the apical meristem from the plant. They peel off all the outer structures of it, all the outer leaves that are just growing. And I'm doing this with my fingers because I'm, pinch I'm pinching it out and I'm... I'm using a scalpel and stuff to actually tease out this little bitty bitty tip of the plant called the apical meristem and then you put it in a in a chemical solution it's like hydroponics you know what hydroponics is is where you're growing your plants in a chemical solution instead of in soil well it's like hydroponics you put this apical meristem on in this solution and it makes it grow and when it grows, it just grows and grows and grows. It's like a cancer cell. It grows like crazy. And then they're, you, they're teased apart. And each of these little cells that are produced in this chemical solution will produce a clone of this plant. And you know, that's how a lot of plants in horticulture, if you grow hostas in your garden, host, apical meristem culture is very, very, very common in the growth of that plant. In fact, my gardening group, uh, my, my master gardener group took a, a, a trip down, a tour of Bell and Greth Gardens down in uh, Mobile, Alabama. 
and one of the tours that we took was a tour of their lab and that's what they were doing they were using plant tissue culture to propagate the plants in their garden and to make more of them and what I mentioned the fact that I had, I had studied this when I was in college and I did this is part of the work that I did when I was uh, working after I graduated they wanted to hire me because not many there's not many people that do that and I had experience doing something and it was a, it was a um, an experience and a something that I was able to do that would help them I, but at the time I wasn't ready to move to Mobile and to work for Bell and Gruff Gardens but you know maybe thinking back on it that might have been kind of fun to do maybe I should have quit what I was doing and moved down to, down to Mobile Mobile might be a good place to live. So, okay, so that's what an apical meristem, and that's how scientists use an apical meristem. Okay, now, besides the apical meristem, there's also another kind of meristem. Like we say, the meristem is the growing point of the plant. So it's in the top bud, the tip bud, it's also in the side buds. So at the axle of the leaves, the axle is the V, so you've got the stem of your plant here, you've got the leaf coming out here, right here in the joint between the stem and the leaf, there's a bud. And that's actually how you can tell the difference in a compound leaf and a simple leaf. A compound leaf, like a leaf on poison ivy, like a leaf on a pecan tree, a leaf on a um, walnut tree. What are some other compound leaves? You know compound leaves. Um, what's another plant that has a compound leaf? Um, buckeye. A buckeye has a compound leaf. So you've got these leaves and leaflets coming off here, off the, the stem. If you look where those little leaflets join that, you will not find a bud. But if you come down to where it joins the stem, at this joint, there's going to be a bud. So that's how you tell the difference between a simple leaf and a compound leaf, because where it joins the stem is a bud. Now that bud is called an axillary meristem. It's at the axle, this joint, in the plant and I'm stretching my fingers apart so hard that it hurts. I'm going to stop this now. Okay. So what the axillary meristem is, it's the Y-shaped joint where the leaf joins the stem. It's the node. Have you ever heard of the node, the leaf node? That's the axillary meristem. It's where you see the bud form. Okay. Another hormone besides auxin. I mentioned auxin is produced by the apical meristem. Now, a, di a different hormone is produced in the axillary meristem, in the side bud, in the node. And that hormone is called cytokinin. And auxin inhibits cytokinin. Auxin pre prevents cytokinin from working. I can't think of an example, but we all know of blocks. If you if you remove a block in something, then whatever was held back is going is going to be able to, to happen. So that's what happens. The auxin is a block, and if you remove it, then the cytokinin is going to function. It's going to create side growth. It's going to allow side growth to happen. So your plants become bushier. When you prune when you, tip, when you tip prune, when you pinch out the growing points of your tips, when you, all of these things, that's going to produce bushiest, bushiest. It's gonna make the bushiest plant that you can have in your garden. It's gonna promote bushiness in your plant. It's gonna promote side growth. That's because you've taken away the oxen. That's basically it. You pinch off the tip, you remove the oxen, the plant gets bushier. There's your brief plant physiology lesson for today. Why does pruning promote plant growth? And that's it. It's kind of counterproductive, isn't it? You cut the plant back and make it grow better. But that's why it works. And it's so simple. 
it's just so simple. If you remove the tip of the plant, it stops the production of auxin. And it, it, that creates a waterfall effect in the plant. And it causes other things to happen in it. It's, it's very simple when you really think about it. Most everything, when you think about it and you get down to how it really happens, isn't that hard. It's you, you just didn't know about it before. I mean, you, if you didn't know something, you can't be expected to understand how it works. Now, this is really weird. Okay, are you familiar with, well, you probably are heard of it, maybe you don't know how it works, and I'll explain to you how this works. Have you, you've heard of 2,4-D. 2,4-D is a synthetic hormone. It's produced by chemists, just like synthetic fertilizers. This is a synthetic hormone that's produced by chemists, and it's a synthetic auxin. And I, we ju I just mentioned what auxin is. Auxin is a plant growth hormone. And so 2,4-D is a chemical that, that mimics auxin. And what does auxin do? Auxin makes the plant grow. So what does 2,4-D do? If 2,4-D if is a synthetic auxin, that means 2,4-D makes the plant grow. Okay. Does that make sense? Why does 2,4-D kill a plant and why does auxin not kill the plant? Well, if you put what the plant is producing is such minute amounts of the auxin that it works as a fertilizer, it works as a hormone that induces growth in the plant. But when you spray the 2,4-D on the plant, it's taken up by the leaves, it's trans transported through the veins, the vascular system in the plant, to all the growing points of the plant, and it grows like crazy. It grows so fast that it uses up all its other nutrients. It can't grow fast enough to keep up with its nutrient production, and it dies. And that's how 2,4-D works. Now let me explain just briefly, 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 while I scratch my face, uh, what 2,4-D is and what 2,4-D means. The name for, the chemical name for 2,4-D is long and you don't need to remember it. You don't need to remember anything other than 2,4-D, but let me tell you what it is. It is, and I've got it over here on another page, so let me flip over. Um, okay, here we go. 2,4-D means 2,4-dichlorophenoxyacetic acid. You know what acetic acid is? Vinegar. So if you smell acetic acid, it smells just like vinegar. Won't go into what phenoxy means, but dichloro means it has two chlorine molecules. And in organic chemistry, carbon forms a uh, was it a um, hexagonal structure? Six points on it. It's a hexagon, and so you can you can number the different points of the of the carbon molecules on the hexagon. So they're numbered one, two, three, four, five, and six. So two, four, dichloro means at position two and position four on the on the carbon molecule. On the, on the hexagonal structure of the carbon molecule is where those chlorine molecules are situated. And then off the other part of it is the phenoxy acetic part of it. But that's all it means. It just tells you that this molecule has two chlorines. It's got a phenoxy group and it's a type of acetic acid. And that's all it means. Now, like I said, that is an auxin, a synthetic auxin. It makes your plants grow to death. That's what it does. That doesn't necessarily mean it's good for the environment. Being a plant physiologist, you learn these things. And no, I did specialize in learning how to identify plants in the field. That's a hobby. I loved it. I still love it. And that's become one of my major hobbies. But I did love learning about how plants grow, what makes plants grow. And so my specialty was an offshoot of plant physiology. 
So I didn't learn just how the plants grow as a whole. I didn't learn systems in the plants. I didn't study organs in the plants. So I didn't study leaves. I didn't study roots. I didn't study veins, the vascular system. But I studied the cells that make up those systems. And it was really, really fascinating and fun. And I'm not sorry I did it. It gave me a job that I loved. How many people specialize in something, they get a job and they dread going to work every day? I never dreaded going to work every day because I loved what I was doing. I didn't make a lot of money doing it, but I made a living. And I mean, I wasn't a millionaire. I wasn't. I wasn't even making a six-figure salary, but I made enough to live on, and that's all I needed. And that's think that, and that I was happy with what I was doing. I didn't get ulcers, and I'm able to smile when I talk about the work that I did in the past. Can everybody do that? I've had a pretty good life. I've really enjoyed this, and I hope I hope that I can make you enjoy it too. I want to, I want to make you be able to understand why plants grow, how plants grow, and maybe you can understand when you're gardening what it is, what can I do, why do, why is it when I do this that it has this effect on this plant. So hopefully I can help you do that. I am a gardener. I am a master gardener. I love, love, love gardening, but it helps to understand why is it that what I do affects the gardening that I'm doing. And being a botanist helps me do that. What I learned in my botany classes made me learn how plants grow and not just how to grow plants. I hope I can teach you how plants grow too. Bye y'all.